If you guys are looking for any cheap and reliable coins, check out MMOPO.com. Use the code PINGU at checkout to get 8% off. Guys, welcome to episode number 6 of the Kodaif Career Mode, and to start off this episode, we're currently 14th in the table, 12 points after 11 games, and uh, something that I didn't actually consider, um, which somebody did comment in the comment section down below, was Kodaif, how they were doing in real life in comparison to um, how I'm doing on the Career Mode, and in actual fact, they're 6th in La Liga at the minute in real life, and... Um, They've been the likes of Real Madrid and Atletico Bilbao. I know Real Madrid haven't had the best of season this year, uh, but you know they're still very big. It's a very big club, and obviously as Cadiz are new, newly promoted, um, I kind of assumed they'd be like you know in the bottom five. Um, but yeah, they're doing they're doing much better than I actually thought they should be doing. Um, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I think I'll be a lot less um, lenient on the results, and we'll just you know we'll keep the side as how they are, and um, yeah, we'll get through. Quite a few games in this episode because I'm going to try and aim to get towards the January transfer window um, by the end of this episode. So I'm almost tempted to simulate like two or three games and then play maybe Val Valencia, Atletico Madrid and Bilbao. Um, and now that I do have my PlayStation 5, I think the next career mode will be on next gen because it kind of makes sense. You know, it'll be kind of like a new game and I'm sure mechanics and gameplay um, will be much better. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So... I did do a kind of a just off the cuff of literally nothing, um, a bit of a poll on Twitter asking um, what teams would be best to do. And the choices were Bolton, Bradford and Barrow. So all three of those in League Two um, in the English divisions, of course. And it would basically be a long form road to glory, you know, like the Derby Crow mode, but with an extra couple of seasons because obviously you get from League Two to the Premier League. Um, the only thing about those career modes is you kind of have to do a lot of academy work because to get money um, to sign new players is basically that's that's the only way to do it. So yeah, I'm not I'm not 100 percent like um, I'm not 100 percent wanting to do a League Two career mode, but I think that's probably the best thing to do as a new um, career mode on next gen. I'm also tempted to actually try the Atletico. Bilbao Basque only one. Um, I think that'd be a really fun idea and something I've not seen too much on YouTube. So we have got a message there about Gyro's um, appearances. I didn't actually realise he was on loan from um, Granoa. So he is a decent player as well. Very good agility and balance and uh, pace. So in game he feels really, really quick. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe playing him a few more games just to ensure that he doesn't get recalled in January. Um, might be something we'll look to do in this episode. To be honest, I might as well do it now for these games that we are going to simulate. And then that way, um, hopefully, not that way, one of the right mid to left mid. Um, again, it's done the same thing. I just The menus on this game are so wonderful. Um, even, even the quick ones on uh, PC do have their issues with uh, navigation. So we'll do that for the time being just to ensure that he doesn't get recalled. So what I think we'll do is simulate these three games and then we'll play the last four um, because they're probably the biggest out of these lot. I don't think, you know, like Granada, Huesca, is that Huesca? Elche, sorry, bottom of the league and Osasuna. They're not exactly the most, um, you know, difficult teams in the world. So I think I think it's probably what we should do. Is it Osasuna? Who, who was I looking at there? Yeah, it was Osasuna, yeah. Um, so I think we'll simulate the first three. We'll do the interactive match sim. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to look to move to PlayStation and do a new career mode. So make sure you do leave some comments down below on any teams. And uh, we'll do another vote and see what comes out on top um, this time. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's been a nice career mode just as a little stopgap between the Derby career mode and our next big career mode um, on next gen, of course, which will be um, hopefully on Friday. So... Yeah, hopefully by next Monday, um, we can get that career mode up and running, uh, the new one. So, you know, it's it's a brand new week and potentially a brand new career mode. So, really exciting times and uh, can't wait to see what you guys do vote for. A few decent players in the Granada team, actually. They've got Gonalons and Soldado, obviously very um, good players in the past, but maybe getting towards the end of their careers. Machis as well, number 11 is decent for them, but... Uh, yeah, I think, I think just simulating games will just, obviously, um, it'll get us to the end of this career mode much faster by, like, an episode or two. And 
it will make it more competitive in terms of where we are on the table um, because it kind of randomised results whereas if I played this kind of game we'd probably win um, but as I said because they are sixth in the table in real life I'm not going to worry too much about the results now because I didn't actually realise how good um, they were doing so far in real life and that's that's probably what I should have looked at uh, when we started the career mode. Goal there for Negredo to make it 1-0 in the 41st minute. And there's full time against uh, Granada, just the one goal from Negredo to uh, get the three points. That'll probably move us up the table a little bit. And um, then if you guys would be interested in like a sim-only career mode, almost like a football manager save. Um, but I think Fifi, you, you want to see the bit of gameplay, you know. It, it, it's not that um, complex, the interactive match sim, but it is a step in the right direction, I think, in a few years' time. Um, you know, hopefully one day um, online career mode will be a thing and I think especially that on uh, interactive match sim could be um, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice to have that option to simulate the games that aren't against like your friend um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see of course so next game is against Osasuna then they're just below us in the table by a couple of points and uh, yeah, another game that I'm not too fussed about playing um, I think we'll mainly focus on playing against, you know, Valencia, Atletico Madrid and Bilbao at the end of the episode. Then we'll be able to move into January and do some January transfers, uh, tran January transfers in the next episode. It's quite odd that we play Atletico Madrid and Bilbao at the end of this episode and then we also play them um, in the next episode. So, yeah, a little, a little bit frustrating when the fixtures kind of just mirror each other and uh, you're playing them within like two games. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, we'll, we'll mainly focus, you know, I think I'll simulate a lot of the games that are against teams that are especially below us, um, but play against the teams that are, um, you know, the top 10 teams basically in the league. And there's, there's quite a few decent ones. Um, we'll come up to those when uh, we eventually do. So let's go into the next one against Osasuna then. I'm almost tempted to do a quick sim because the it is interactive, but it's not at the same time. It's, it's one of those where it's... You know, you kind of just wait, what, wait in for something to happen. You can make substitutions, I guess, um, which makes it slightly interesting. But all in all, not too. Uh, oh, it's because our Fernandez guys are basically because they're both called Fernandez. I was wondering, like, who's Alex and who's Augusto? Um, and of course, it's our central midfielders. And I guess that's quite a clever way of making sure you don't get mixed up uh, between the two of them. But yeah, also sooner, other than like Johnny and Tompkins from. Crystal Palace, bit of an odd transfer. Um, haven't exactly got the best team in the world, so should realistically win this one. Um, if I did play it, obviously we would guarantee the win, but I thought I'd just simulate just to just to get to the end of the season much faster and we can get onto that next gen career mode. Um, this time next week, pretty much. So yeah, I think I think it'd be interesting to see what your guys. Um, you know, maybe some of you guys aren't happy with this particular career mode and. We're looking for something else. Now you've got the chance to uh, change it up. But uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed my time at Cadiff. I think they're a fun little team. And, um, you know, what one thing I could always do is kind of just do what we've done on this career mode, but do it on PlayStation and do a Season 2 on there. Um, but I definitely want to move to PlayStation 5, obviously, with the next-gen FIFA. It will make things much, much better. I do remember back on, like, FIFA 14... Um, when it did go to next gen as well, you could really tell the difference in you know the quality of like gameplay and um, just the way the game functions. So obviously that'll be much much better. Maybe there'll be a few new features on career mode in terms of like maybe the simulate speed will be optioned. Um, yeah, you, you never know until it comes out. And they do actually score there just to end off this uh, talk. And uh, yeah, as I said, it, it just randomizes the results and hopefully. Um, it will just make things a little bit more competitive and a little bit more fun. Um, there's 2 0 for Osasuna, Budmir with the goal. I think he's actually quite decent. He's quite a good, I want to say youth. I want to say he's a young player, but he might be quite old. I think he's about 75 rated. Um, yeah, some, some of these particular games I'm just not too interested in playing because I just know I'd beat them. And it's nice that Osasuna have actually um, probably won this game, and that, that way it just makes things. A little bit more interesting obviously once we get towards the end of the season um, we'll try and play a little bit more games but I think trying to simulate like two or three an episode um, you know we'll just make sure we get we get to uh, 
the next trance window much faster, particularly. Um, and I'm not I'm not 100% sure what we need to sign, so make sure you do leave some comments down below. I think maybe like a box to box midfielder. I'm almost tempted to sign, you know, like Jamie Shackleton. Um, although he is a little, maybe I could get someone a bit higher rated. But he's the kind of player that I want, you know, like a high high paced midfielder um, that can win the ball quite well. So there is a slim chance we could make it 2 2. And we do actually rescue a point against Osasuna. Alejo. Very good winger. Um, and, you know, depending on what that next career mode is, I might be tempted to take, like, one or two players from this career mode, especially Alejo, the left midfielder. He's absolutely quality um, and probably wouldn't cost too much. But, yeah, there we go. We do in the game 2-2 against us as soon. Or I guess we dropped a couple of points. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's definitely some players, like the goalkeeper as well. Um, Ledesma, very nice indeed. Uh, how old is he? Is he, like, 27? Yeah, 27 years old. Um, but yeah, Alejo's already gone up to 76. He's not the fastest, but in terms of like on the ball movement, he's really, really smooth. And, um, you know, it's quite a rarity for a player that is, you know, only around 74 rated when you do start the career mode. Um, but yeah, at 25, very nice player indeed. We've got him up to the five star skills now. Um, but yeah, I, li I like the team, to be honest. It's, it's quite a fun project um so if you, any of you guys are interested in a career mode in spain i definitely would suggest Cadiff because you know may, maybe we haven't had the time because of next gen to properly get into this career mode but i think a good season here um see how we do and move on to something else will be uh, the best thing to do but then then again if you guys want me to do a season two um i can always look to basically continue it on playstation 5 so yeah next game is against uh Huesca, i think Elche, sorry, they've got quite similar badges. That's why I do pretty much swing and hope hope it's the right one. It's kind of like that shield crest. Um, obviously, they are bottom of the table. So, if I did play this game, especially at home, I'd 100% I'd win this game if I played it. Um, yeah, we've got this game to finish off the month. Then we got Ibar, Valencia, Atletico Madrid, and Bilbao. Then we've got the January transfer window. It's quite interesting in Spain. Obviously, you've got no Christmas fixtures like it's so weird just seeing a massive gap there um, even like you know unless we get a Copa del Rey where's that Copa del Rey is like the FA Cup isn't it in Spain so I'm not too sure um, I don't know Where, whereabouts is it Copa de España I guess it's, that's what it's called um, and I'm not sure if we go in at the round round of two because these seem like mostly um, second division Spanish teams, you know, like Zaragoza and La Palmas. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I guess by the end of this episode, we should probably know. Um, but yeah, we'll simulate this next game against Elche. Hopefully, um, we get the three points, but you never know against team bottom of the league. Um, like Derby are in real life at the minute. Hopefully, we get a new manager soon. Um, but they've got a few, a few players in there I do know about actually. There's Barragan. The right back and uh, Moisander, the Finnish um, defender, Longstaff as well from Newcastle. Um, so it's not it's not as terrible as I thought it was. And maybe maybe Elche with the team. I should have probably looked at what the ratings were. Um, but Kadif actually had the lowest transfer budget, and that's why I assumed they were you know the weakest team. Whereas I think somebody like Elche is probably the weakest team with that kind of squad. I don't think there's anyone. Um, you know, over like 73 rated, whereas we've got like Negredo and the two Fernandezes and um, the wingers. But they have made it 1-0 there with Fidel, the striker, to uh, get them into an early start. And as I said, just simulating this game is just make it much more competitive for us. We do make it 2-0 there. El Che Fidel with another goal. And uh, yeah, obviously it just keeps the career mode interesting while we get these, you know, unpredicted results. Although... When I do play against teams like towards the bottom of the table, um, I do struggle as well. So yeah, I guess I guess it uh, kind of translate over to simulating games as well, um, and I guess it will affect the morale a little bit. So that will that will make a interesting dynamic if the players aren't winning. You know, most of the games. I don't think I've ever been. Um, no, we haven't. We we've literally in the Derby Crow mode. I finished like top. Um, where do we finish in the first season? In the championship. I want to say like fourth. But it might have been third. Um, 
Or did we? Yeah, we definitely went to the playoffs. So I've never been into in a Karimo basically below sixth in the table. So I don't know how um, morale works with players when when they aren't exactly in the top half of the table. But uh, the objective for the season, I guess, is just to avoid relegation. So as long as they do that, we should be all good. There we go, full time against Elche. We do lose the game 2-0 and, you know, it just keeps it interesting in terms of these odd results, you know, against Osasuna and um, Elche. We've dropped, like, five points now, um, whereas we'd be five points better off if we did play the game. So, if you look at where we are in the table, you know, we, we'd be towards the 21-point mark, so we'd be, like, eighth in the table if we played those last two games, whereas simulating them means we are only 12th in the table, um, still eight points off the relegation zone, so it's, it's not too much of a concern, but I guess it just, you know, just tries to make it a little bit more, um, because eventually I think, I, I think Cadiff have had a good start to the season, um, but I'm sure they will, um, I don't know, I, would, I don't want to bet already, but I'm guessing they're not going to finish like top 12 in the league, but you never know, they might, they might do it, but, uh, next game is against Ibar, Ibar a bit of a borderline one, the whether to play them or not. Um, because they're a decent team, but they're not phenomenally, you know, exciting. Like, I'll probably play against the likes of, like, Celta, um, Valencia, Bilbao, Getafe, and then pretty much everyone above, um, you know. It's quite interesting that Celta are down where they are, because they've got, like, um, Iago Aspas and a few other decent players. But, uh, yeah, that win with from Elche actually does put them out of the relegation zone. They were bottom of the table, so I guess it makes it more interested in that area um but there's about five or six teams that i'd rather just not play and simulate and that way we just get some more interesting results so we'll we will simulate this uh, final game of the episode against ibra i think and then we'll play the final three um against valencia madrid and bilbao and that you know they're, they're very good teams in spain and that way we can move into the january trans window in the next episode um and yeah it, it just it just keeps us moving in this career mode um, at a nice speed. So, looking at their team, they've got a couple of decent players. They've got uh, Inui, the winger, Rafa Sores. I'm not too sure. If their goalkeeper's decent. He's about 79 rated. Um, Alario up front's okay. Um, but all in all, it's you know it's kind of a similar quality team to... Um, you know, it's, it's a better team than us. But I think if I played this particular game, we'd win it. So, I guess by simulating... Um, it keeps it interesting. There's a goal for Ibar to make it 1-0 with Alario. And, um, yeah, you know, if we, if we drop a few points in this game and uh, we go into those big final three of the episode, it will just, uh, you know, keep us, keep us in a very interesting spot in the table. And obviously in terms of the strict transfer um, negotiations that we do have on, by being a team that are, you know, not exactly doing too well, it just makes transfers... A little bit more realistic and tougher to do so i've got a chance to make it 2-0 here we do get the foot in there with hasebe um and it'll be interesting to see how you know particular the um players perform once we have come out of these games but kevin lasagna with another goal very very good player i must say um i don't i'd be very tempted to try it i think a new Danese career mode would be something quite interesting with the watford links especially um you know, I think I think they're a team that you could do quite a bit with. They've got like Delafeu at the minute, a very good winger indeed. And uh, yeah, Kevin Lasagna up front, very very good striker. Have we got a chance? Yeah, there we go, two two one. Now against Ibar, we've got two very good strikers. Obviously, um, the only the only real area I'll probably look at in January is maybe a right back and a central midfielder that can properly run. Um, but we haven't got the most amount of money in the world so we're not going to be able to make all the tra transfers in the world um but you know what one or two maybe one on loan and one permanent um we'll just get us to the end of the season and uh, hopefully we can uh, avoid relegation chance here for ibar and they do make it 2-2 with kadzio um i think that's how you say his name i'm not too sure but uh yeah they do make it 2-2 and um makes it interesting going into these final 30 minutes. I do like that you can make substitutions during the games. Um, hopefully, with these games, playing for Gyro, um, the loan isn't terminated, but we'll have to wait and see in January. And obviously, if it does get terminated, maybe we'll need a uh, another winger. So 
I don't mind Lozano as well. He's, he's a decent backup striker um, to have. I'm almost tempted to try the right back that's high rated. Um, although um, Acapo does have much better pace defending and physical. Can't say for Negredo. Does make it 3-2 and I've literally just subbed him off as well. Uh, which is a little bit frustrating but that's one of the things with this interactive match sim. Um, once you do make subs they're kind of locked in. Whereas if I scored that in the actual game... Um, I could have probably kept him on, but chance here for Eyeball to make it 3-3. Three, three. But I guess it, you know, it just keeps things, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get the three points from this game or not. Um, but with 20 minutes to go, they have just scored to make it 3-3. Three, three. It's 4-3 for Eyeball, literally out of nowhere. Esposito with the goal to make it 4-3 and to potentially nick all the points from this game. And uh, as I said, because if I did play this game, then we probably would have won. And uh, this way it kind of gives us something to chase, you know, by playing only like the top 10 teams in the league. Um, you know, it just mixes things up and hopefully we just make this career mode as realistic as possible. That's that's my main aim with every career mode that I do. I never want to sign, you know, unrealistic players. I never want to be in an unrealistic position. But I think the game at times does make it very, very difficult to achieve realism. Um the way that it does function but we have lost the game 4-3 against Ibar um day after my birthday which is this week what a what a treat um in lockdown of course and uh yeah 12th in the table at the minute we're currently you know if we got what is it how many games have we simulated three or four you know if we won 12 if we had an extra 12 or um you know 15 points you know it'd just be a little bit too we'd be too high in the table um, by simulating these games, you know, we're, we're mid-table and there's still, it's not that much of a concern about relegation because we're eight points clear and at this point I just don't see that gap ever really being a, too much of a concern. Um, but yeah, we will be playing the final three games of the episode now against um, Valencia, then Atletico Madrid and uh, who's the other team? Bilbao. So into the game then against Valencia, we will be playing this one. And uh, yeah, they have got a very, very good team indeed. And uh, I think we will take Gyro out for... Um, it's either Goodmanson or Sanchez. And it's probably Goodmanson because I do quite like... Um, quite like his style. So we'll stick him on the right-hand side. Not too sure if we should potentially look to put Evans in. Um, but I guess he's just a decent backup for the time being. Um, until we get to... January um yeah there's there's a lot of players down here in the reserves that are you know kind of the same and there's, there's a chance that one or two of them might get recalled and that way we can free up some wages for January but yeah let's go into the game now here we are then for the game against Valencia quite a nice like it's almost like a baby blue white kit um they do have Silicon in goal then Lato Palista um Equal and Manguala from uh, Manchester City I remember them paying about 45 million for him and just never seemed to really pay off for him. Um, and then Correa at uh, right back, then Jason, Torre, Rashic, and uh, Lee on the left hand side, then Gomez and uh, Gaia. What? What is going on? Gaia's a left back. Why is he playing up front game? Hmm. This game's very interesting. And this is... Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing Lee and Gaia hopefully will change in game because he's playing left mid and then Gaia at left you know, left mid makes more sense than playing at striker. Um, because at the minute... Yeah. I just don't quite understand why a left back's playing up front for Valencia. Um, but we'll have to wait and see whether they do move in game. But things like that just really, just really frustrate me on the career mode because that's like a fundamental. And there was a few of those in the derby career mode that I did notice. Um, you know, like centre backs playing at left wing and stuff like that. And I'm not too sure why it does happen, but yeah, first game of the episode, I, I tend to struggle in the first game just to get warmed up for gameplay. But maybe not this game because we have made it one nil there in the fifth minute and. Uh, Against Valencia, hopefully, we'll have a bit of a difficult game, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, Negredo just in the right place at the right time. Absolute acres for him. 
and uh, does find the back of the net to get a seventh goal of the season. You know, good return at the minute. Um, we've only played about 12 or 13 games, and to get a goal pretty much in every other game um, for a 34 year old is pretty good. But like to Goodmanson, he's actually quite a good youth player. I'm not too sure what his potential is, but uh, in terms of how he feels in game, it's really solid and really does get pulled across the face of goal there. Once you're on the attack here. Great tackle from Pepe, like really full-blooded. Um, McGrady's got a chance here now to run through. Goes around Mangala. Can he get the shot off? Yes, he can, but defender does track back. They've had a lot of possession, Valencia, but uh, again, there's, it's like trying to turn that possession into goals is what the computer does seem to struggle with. And they've got a chance here through the middle. Pepe, the only last man. See, it's this here. Like, why has he not done something? They've, like, just held the ball for no particular reason. Can't say for Valencia with Rasic. Try to slip it into Gaia with the shot. And <laughs> the left back, with his weaker foot, has found the back of the net there to make it 1-0. 1-0, uh, sorry. And uh, it's quite a nice kick, actually, from Valencia. Um, but it's just really odd. I don't... <laughs> Is it like a second... I, don't, I kind of see Gaia as a left-back, but maybe he has like a secondary position of striker, but I just... It's just really odd. His first goal of the season as well um, against us, but I just don't quite understand a left-back playing striker. Just here for Gaia, I've had to take him out, and maybe it might be a red for Hasebe there, but he was going to get absolutely caught if I didn't do this, and maybe the red ref won't give the red. Because of how brilliant... No, see how brilliant brilliant refs are this year. <laughs> how is that not a red? <laughs> I tried to get the ball. Completely missed because I just knew if I didn't do that, then Guy would have just run clean through and scored. Um, but they, they, the only hope that referees are fixed is next gen. Um, but that just shouldn't be happening. on a On a football game in 2020, you know... Clear reds like that should should happen, um, and even if it's not a red, even if it's not a red, it has to be a yellow. Because I've done a foul, and I've not gone for the ball, um, but to not give anything at all is just—it's really odd, and I don't know why um, they've broken refs, and I don't know how it's acceptable to release the game um, <laughs> with that with that as the way it works. Um, but I'm still a bit confused of Gaia playing at striker as a left back. Um, Can't say for Valencia on the edge of the box into Gaia. What is happening? Why is he like a really, really good striker? I'm going to scout him after this game and have a look and see. Does he? Because obviously he can train players to move position. That's the only thing I can think of is if Valencia have converted him to a striker. And he's on that development plan, but I just, I don't think that's ha what's happened, but they have made it 2-1, and uh, yeah, I just don't, I don't quite understand. Chance here in the box for Rasic, does make it 3-1, and um, yeah, I guess, I guess just, I'm still confused at Gaia playing striker, nearly got the foot in there with Pepe, but goes straight to Urus, and uh, does get his third goal of the season. To make it 3-1, really powerful shot, of course, with the 25 shot error. Um, any, you know, scoring opportunity, they pretty much put away. Uh, but now we've got really 30 minutes to go to potentially rescue a point. Chance here in the box. There's 4-1. And, um, yeah, you, you can really tell the difference when you're playing against, you know, these top teams like Valencia. And, um, you know, maybe like a mid-table or bottom half team. And, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess maybe if we're kind of sticking to simulating like the easy games and playing only against the tough teams then maybe we will be in a relegation battle with only eight points um you know that pass from pepe they're just really poor can't say for fernandez can he make it 4-2 does indeed but uh probably not enough time to score another couple of goals but i guess it keeps the goal difference um Slightly better than what it is. I don't know. I'm not too sure what it is actually on the table um, But yes, it's been a very competitive game against Valencia, which is nice. I, I kind of wish Every game was kind of like this, you know, we, we've had a couple of chances, but defensively they've been quite solid um, But going forwards, they've been absolutely clinical, especially with 
um, Gaia, the left back, playing up front and uh, scoring a couple of goals to make the difference. And you know, it's just one of those games where it just really confused me. Gaia playing at striker, I'm, I just do not understand why that is. And they got a chance to make it five two there in the final minute, and um, it's just trying to get the ball off them. It's just so frustrating and uh, that goal that we did score was cancelled out and we do lose the game by three goals and uh, yeah I guess I guess what if we're doing this then I guess we are kind of in a relegation battle because if we're only playing against these tough teams then simulating against the easy teams is the only kind of way we'll get points uh, but we'll have to wait and see maybe we'll get points against Bill Bow in the next one next game is against Bill Bow then they are currently 11th so not exactly doing too well but as you can see by the table there's only five points, um, six point, seven points, sorry, between us and uh, Granada in the relegation zone. But we are, you know, we're basically where I want us to be in the table. I'll kind of ignore what's going on in real life. Um, but in my head, you know, as a newly promoted team, ideally I want us in the bottom five. So I guess I guess we're currently achieving that. So it's good to see. Um, I think we will go for the blue kit for this game. I'm not too sure if I want to make any changes. Maybe get... Sanchez back in since he is 74 rated obviously should be a little bit better um, than Gyro um, but all in all you know it makes it more interesting for me especially um, when we're kind of you know getting realistic results here we are then at Bill Bauer team that potentially might be the next career mode or maybe one in the future anyway where we do a Basque only um, signing career mode at Bill Bauer it's a very very nice team you start with anyway and uh, you know to potentially bring in a few other players here and there as you can see they've got Simon in goal um, Yuri Bereshi and uh, Martinez de Gene Kappa then uh, Mikol I'm not too sure who the right centre mid is Lopez Sunset and uh, Munayin Gomez and uh, Raul Garcia up front it's, you know especially Garcia up front like he used to be a central midfielder and they kind of moved him into a basically a new Adruiz since he did um, I think he did retire last season, so, you know, trying to replace a player that's been there for years and years and years is a very difficult job. Um, but I think Garcia's doing a decent job job at the minute, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very tempted to try the Bilbao career mode on next gen. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I'll, I'll see what your guys' response is, and um, hopefully we can potentially get a point in this one. But away from home, we do kind of struggle. Um, but we did get an early goal against Valencia, but it's just about staying switched on. And we've got the early goal in, in this game with Kevin Lasagna. Um, but hopefully we don't get the same outcome as the last game where we scored early and then got quite heavily beaten. Um, but they're not playing any left-backs up front, so it won't, it won't uh, confuse me too much. Chance here in the box for Bill Bow. Cross the face of goal to Munayim with the shot and into the back of the net. They do equalise just before the 15th minute mark. Munayim probably one of their best players, I think, at like 83 rated. Um, he's been a very good player on FIFA over the last, like, you know, years, to be honest. Like, I, I, I'm not too sure how old he is, to be frankly honest. I want to say he's around 27, 28, but he might be in his 30s. Um, but yeah, he's, he's definitely one that kind of makes the Bilbao crew mode very interesting as a very good player indeed um, yes yeah, it's, it's, it's basically the next goal is quite important in this game because we kind of capitulated in the last game but if we can potentially make it 2-1 for us um, then hopefully we can potentially get something chance here for lasagna just trying to get into a scoring opportunity but Dijon is so fast to keep up with him um, I, I think he is I think he's from Getafe, isn't he? So, signing on the uh, career mode. And as you can see, the, midf the midfield two of Fernandez and Fernandez is making it very difficult defensively for us. So, we definitely need that. You know, the, the perfect player would be someone like Allen from Everton, but obviously massively out of our price range um, and not that realistic. So, you know, if, if there's a cheap version of Allen, then please do suggest him because I can't quite think of a player like him but uh, lasagna with the shot but saved by simon to pretty much end off the first half chance here for bill bow in the box to make it 2-1 to start off the second half it is gomez i believe and uh sorry it's garcia the striker um 
And yeah, it's just super, it is very difficult, obviously, on ultimate difficulty with all these sliders that we do have. Um, but the difference between this crow mode and the derby crow mode is obviously because um, basically the players I had in that derby crow mode just had much better potentials and um, the stats on the cards were just ridiculous, especially by the end. Like some of the stats were just unbelievable. Um, obviously starting fresh on these sliders it makes it very very difficult because um, basically none of the players are up for up to scratch um, with you know what the AI's um, players play like I can say for lasagna can I get around Dejene please get around him that is a lovely run from lasagna because obviously he is left footed um, does unfortunately miss the target I will get Lozano and Goodmanson on the pitch um, I'll even get Evans on for Fernandez. definitely need a central midfielder in January it's just the area that you know it's, it's so important because obviously it just links everything together um, but really really close from Lasagna to make it 2-2 chance here for Munayna wide goes around Dacapo very easily across the face of goal really nice ball and that you know Munayin is just such a good player and uh Literally a perfect ball across the face of the goal to win um, Bilbao all the points. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very tempted to try that Atletico Bilbao career mode on next gen as the first career mode. Because um, you would, because of the way you sign players, the only way is through the academy and pretty much players that are born in the Basque region. Um, I think there's one or two other ways of doing it. Like if I think like Griezmann and Laporte, um, they count because they came through the academy, I believe. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see what you guys do think. But uh, I don't think we will get any points from this game. Lasagna does get the shot off, but is saved by Simon. Bilbao in the box to end off the game. It's just the speed that they move it is so quick. I've even got in with Pepe there. And great block by Hasebe. And that's full time against Athletic Bilbao. And uh, yeah, Munayin was absolutely quality as he is like 84 rated. Very, very good player. And um, we had a couple of chances to potentially get something from the game. But I do I do like the fact that we're getting realistic results against these top six teams. And um, yeah, I think we'll definitely be in a relegation battle. So I, I quite like the, you know, the idea now with the, that we are... Um, five points off the relegation zone with you know Atletico Madrid next and um, who do we have after Atletico in January we have another few dif difficult games you know Celta's quite decent um, Madrid again Atletico Bilbao again um, Sevilla Villarreal Valencia Ibar you know it's it's a really really tough run so by the time we get to March you know, we could very easily be in the relegation zone. So, I think we're definitely in the area that I want us to be for this career mode. Um, so, yeah, we, we have got a message here. And something I've not even considered is players expiring in their contracts. So, let me just quickly check that since, uh, obviously, we don't want anyone leaving. And uh, it is actually some quite... Is he on loan? I didn't even realise our keeper's on loan. That's probably why he is so good, because uh, he's not ours. Um... We've got Espino, Fernandez, and Negredo, and Bodiger, and the left back that I haven't even used yet. Um, there's actually quite a few. But I guess the ones that I want to keep particularly are, especially the left back, we'll go into negotiations for him. One thing I will do um, from now on is actually keep release clauses in the contracts because that is what does happen in real life in La Liga. Um, kind of did forget about that. You know, it's kind of kind of just keeps it realistic and uh, you know a little bit fun um, so yeah he's going for that 8.8 .8. we'll, we'll try and knock up an extra million since he is a decent left back to be fair but uh, I guess we're just going to have to stick to the 8.8 .8 and uh, move into the wages hopefully it's not too oh, I guess we're, we're going to have to offer um, kind of just want to offer what he's currently on to be frankly honest plus a 200k signing on bonus um and there we go, he does accept that. So, yeah, it's just about keeping the wages the same. I maybe could have put the signing on bonus a little bit lower. Um, we have got a few players out on loan, like this Mayoral guy. I'm not 
too sure what his stats are like. Um, 80 pace. Okay, dribbling. Um, but that might be a thing that we could do in January, just recall everyone um, that is usable. But uh, it looks like Gyro's loan. Is it loan? No, it must be expiring at the end of the season, yeah. Not, not in a month's time. Um, so I think we'll extend... Ideally, I want to extend everyone. Because I don't want to lose players, especially Negredo. Well, oh, maybe not. Why well, can't I extend him? Is he retiring at the end of the year? Oh dear. It's like our best striker. <laughs> maybe it's a good idea. I need to do one one year on this career mode if we're losing Negredo. Um, who's, you know, the thumbnail player. A um, little bit frustrating, but we'll go in... I don't know, like, Fernandez is one of those, like, he's a good player, but on 27 grand a week, is he really worth it? Is it worth trying to sell him at least? And maybe reinvest in that kind of money? Because um, he's not great. He's okay, but he's not phenomenal. Um, have we sold this guy? Apparently not. I'm sure I've translisted him. Um... But yeah, I think I'll leave it there for the time being. We'll, we'll maybe look at that at the end of the episode in between them. Um, whether I do extend them or not, I'll have to wait and see. Um, but I'm kind of tempted to save this Atletico Madrid game for the next episode. So yeah, I've just worked out that it's about... If we do what I've done, basically, by saying saving this game for the next episode, we're also not on the best of form at the minute anyway, so maybe saving it for tomorrow is probably the best thing to do. Um... So I'll do a couple of games plus the January transfers in the next episode. Then we'll do the same in the episode after that. Um, so that'll get us to episode 8. Then we've got episode 9 to about there. Episode 10 gets us to about mid-April. And then episode 11 to finish off the season. And then that way we can, um, you know, get to the end of the season. And then maybe look for a job that's slightly better than this Cadiff job um, on next gen. So yeah, let me let me know in the comment section down below um, what kind of team you'd want to see on next gen. Um, whether it would be like that kind of Atletico Bilbao, Athletic Bilbao, I don't know what, I always call them Atletico Bilbao and it must trigger so many people because it just isn't right at all. Um, yeah, maybe in a career mode with them where we only do Basque signings or um, maybe like a League 2, like a Bradford or a Bolton. Um, kind of long journey uh, career mode. So yeah, let me know down below what you guys want to uh, see and uh, yeah, see you tomorrow for another episode of uh, the Kadif career mode.